That. That's Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. It's almost time for the big giveaway. Don't forget to be in front of your TV at 9 o'clock and remember to wear your masks. That was a lot of information I wasn't ready for. Well, everybody who knows knows there's no witch in that movie. Okay. <laughs> Just throw that out there. You went to see Michael Myers. Not only didn't you get him, you didn't even get the titular witch. He, uh, titular witch. <laughs> the tit witch. There's a witch mask, but that's not what they That's about to. as far as it that's goes. That's about as far as it goes. That is, uh, that is the Silver Shamrock Mask Company has put out three masks that will, dis- will murder children, bring forth snakes, and destroy the world. And uh, Each one has a different power? No, I think they have the same power. Oh, okay. I'm not clear on how the rules worked. I thought one controlled the snakes, one I know brought one, about the end. The one thing I do know is that the movie has a fantastic ending. And the movie itself is weird, but the movie has a great ending. Tom Atkins is a, is a doctor. Alert. <laughs> it's, it's from 1983. Tom Atkins is a... Oh, 40 years. I think I did write a 40-year anniversary one on it. Tom Atkins is a doctor who, some for some reason, is hunting down this silver shamrock thing and knows what it's going to do. And he runs to a uh, he gets uh, he gets escapes from the warehouse, survives uh, survives all kinds of attacks, and he gets to a, a remote gas station and he picks up a phone and he calls someone and says, "You got to get these off the air. It's going to air on all three channels because it was 1983." And somehow this works, and he gets it off the first two channels. But then the third one, it's not off there yet, and it's starting to do the thing where it's going to kill all the children. And he's just yelling, turn it off, turn it off. It's pretty great. But, but there's no witch, though. There's no witch, and nobody explained to me how the time zones work, because this is the West Coast, so if this was happening at 9 o'clock everywhere, then most of the country was already fucked. Well, it's like feeding the gremlins after midnight. It's not yeah. a perfect movie, but I but enjoy it. But it's considered that. a good one? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I consider it a good one. All right. It's getting reappraised as being decent. But the reason we played that is that it is spooky season. Which is October. Yes, and it's basically October. Uh, this is our spooky season spectacular I have written down. That's a good name. Yes. I had Everyone likes alliteration, and I had no titles for it. They like alliter- for yeah. Peak October. They like alliteration? P- P- Peak, o- Peak October is not alliteration. <laughs> but that's its own thing. That is a, that is a clumsy portmanteau. The uh, Spooky Season Spectacular, they like alliteration, but they don't like, uh, like I, I thought about Spooky Season Spooktacular, but that was a hat on hat. Mm. It's already got spooky in Redundant. there. Redundant. Yes. Next. Yes. The next is the correction and apology. As is every week, I have to apologize for the order of these. I don't know why you try. I think I've brought it up on more than one occasion, but you persist. And you know what? You're starting to win me over. I kind of, I kind of like to see your timeline. Well, the good news is whenever that Cabin in the Woods episode airs, which you have not heard yet, but there's references to filming the uh, Gremlins episode, which is already out. So the timeline's messed up either way because we recorded that one first, but then. That's what happens in time, man. Yeah. Uh, The edit did work. You're going to hear that episode and the the lovely, joyous disaster that it was. Oh, God. I forgot. I have blocked that one out of my mind. It was a watch along until it wasn't. All right. But I managed to put both the watch along that we did finish and the two false starts of us screwing up the beginning of it. All Sounds horrible. So it's, look for that, anyone who's listening. It's coming at some point. It's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know when. It could be next week, but I don't want to make those promises anymore. But oh. it is Halloween, spooky season month. Why Why are we here? Why are we doing this now? Well, first. Why? You've apologized for your terrible time. You talked over it. Fuck. Crow. I can talk over that. Yeah. I don't need to. What is What has Nicolas Cage been up to? Well, we talk about it in the... Cabin in the Woods episode, who knows when that's coming out. His, I misnamed the movie. So it's also an apology for a correction for an episode that hasn't aired yet. The movie's, correction. The movie's dream scenario 
where he's he's just he's a regular guy who suddenly is in millions of people's dreams at the oh, same time. That's the one that's coming out soon. November tenth. But mm. before that, he has a movie called Butcher's Crossing coming out October twentieth. I don't even know where he squeezed this one in. We looked at all his movies coming up months ago. It wasn't in there. But somehow he's filmed the whole like snowbound western that looks like uh, a very low rent. Uh, what's that movie that Leonardo DiCaprio tried to kill himself to win an Oscar? The Revenant. The Revenant. Or Kateful Cabin of Eight. Because I that's, he's not in that movie and it's bad. So he's got a movie coming out October twentieth and November tenth. It's a big it's exciting not, it's, time. Is it but spooky season or is it Nick Cage season? All seasons are Nick Cage season. <laughs> you know, there's also yes, yeah, the season of the Nick Cage. That's what have been Halloween three. You know what I just heard about Nick Cage? Uh-oh. I should probably have saved it for Nick Cage news at some point. But also, how does he spell his name? Is it N I C K or N I C? I think it's N I C. Because me too. Yeah. So I just thought of this like right a minute before we started this podcast. If you take his name. And just use one C. It's like a Nick Age. All Nick all the time. A Nick Age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pete. Also, mm. one time I heard he went on a quest for the Holy Grail. Is that one of the... No, it's real. He did. Oh, he like went, in real life? In real life. They get in touch with this philosophical side. I heard he went to Europe and then a couple of places in America. So... I don't know if we found it. the The article I read didn't finish that. We know where it is. It's protected by a seal in one old ass night. Andre the seal. Is that from something? I think it might be. Oh, I think you're right. I know. See, now I know I'm right. Our references are always on point. It's not quite Ethel Merman, but it's pretty good. It's aquatic based. Do we have a theme? That's right. Pete got just got back from uh, the mystical land of Orlando. I did, and I went and saw the Universal. Uh, what is it? The Hollywood Horror Nights. I don't. I wasn't there. It. Well, you're going to be there next year. I'm going to get you. That's true. I'm going to get you on a plane. I I wrote down the titles. Let me tell you the titles of the ten houses they had this year. Ooh, ten of them. Ten. How many did you write down? Uh, all ten. I had oh, actually oh, no. look it up and do research. It was painful. What do we got? Ready for it? Oh God, I can't read my own notes. Terrible. Now well, you know how I feel. Terrible notes. All right. So we had a Stranger Things house. A Nope, that's where Was I it next to a Things house? It was next to a Yeti house. And the name of that one, ready? It's Yeti or Not, Here They Come. It's a solid title. Well, it's a horror house, not a yep. comedy house. Then they had Dueling Dragons, Blood Moon, uh, A Last of Us house, and Odd Fellows, which was a circus theme where they, he's there to take your soul after you go through his horrible, horrible big top. Uh, the, was Pee Wee there? No, he's dead. No, the, so he could have been there. Was the ghost of Pee Wee there? They had the new Exorcist movie, yeah, which would be fine. But it's, I guess, scenes from like a lot of people liked it. It was one of the big ones with a lot of people in line. But it was all scenes from the new movie, and I don't, you know, it's just kind of there. I don't know what the relevance is, and it's just the Exorcist girl again. So I don't know what to tell you. Not much of that one. The Yeti one, far and away, was my favorite. So if you're going to be did there... Did you get the 10? I don't think you did. Yeah, I did. You know, oh, yeah, and there was Universal Horrors. Oh, yeah, that's the one I would have liked the most. That was really good. That was one of the three. The Yeti one, the uh, the Universal Horror, and the Exorcist all got me. I jumped. Yeah. They were jump scares, though, so, you know, lowest form. So they worked. They worked yeah. in three of the houses. Universal was a good one. So you recommend this to anyone that's in the Florida area? I recommend it to you. I'm not getting out of You're going to get on a plane, and we're going to go down there, and you're going to look at these houses that are filled with horror, and you're going to enjoy them. Mm. And the people are all horror people. They're your people. What is it, like a 14-hour drive? I have no idea. No, it's more than 14. Jeez. You think so? I'm too old. We can't do a two-hour road trip. At least I don't think I could. I drove to Canada and back in the same day. That was three hours total. Mm, that's pushing the limits of human endurance. It I was think. hard. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but no, I think it would be fun. I I think you're going to enjoy it. They have throughout the park, too, they have, uh, what do they have? They have little pieces going on, like sets just, you know, they decorated that area of the park, and they got people, cast members, wandering around in costumes. It's fun. It was the summer of 69 with vampires. I'm not opposed to any of the things on land. Right. You understand? But it's the air that's going to kill you. I don't like flying. We'll watch Final Destination, mm-hmm. all of them, before we get on the plane, mm-hmm. and then we'll go down. Mm-hmm. Is it a plane crash in every one of the Final Destination movies? It is literally a plane crash in none of them. There's a plane explosion in the first one. That's a crash. That's not a crash. It's it a didn't crash. crash into anything. It exploded. It crashed into the explosion, or the air, whatever it was. I don't know how science works, physics mm-hmm. and such. 
you know, you've proven that. <laughs> By the way, we also, while we were in Florida with my sister and brother-in-law, went on, and my brother too. I don't know how that works either, but we went to the Kennedy Space Center, which, you know, NASA is based there. Well, my brother and my brother-in-law spent the entire time um, while we were on the tour bus with the tour telling us all the real facts about aliens. <laughs> and it was hard to hear the actual tour, but let me tell you, I'm not sure what's real and what's not. And after the tour, my brother pointed out that nowhere on this entire touristy thing was a single alien sold or displayed. Yeah, it's weird that they didn't do that. We were wearing T-shirts that had the NASA symbol with an alien. People loved it. Matching T-shirts, by the way. All the work you did to make me want to go down there, and you've just undone it all in one bus no, trip. No, not a single alien on the entire NASA site. <laughs> I think they're hiding something, right? That, they don't want to draw attention to the fact. That wasn't the thing that was keeping me away. Mm, it see. was going with people who are going to be like, where are all the aliens at? There was a plan. There was a speaking of, there was a plan at one point to get behind the scenes. I was a diversion and I had to strip down and grease up and like get the guards to leave the doors. Wait, so I'm back in. <laughs> the two of them, <laughs> the two of them could, you know, sneak to the back and find out where the aliens are kept. It never happened. So everywhere else we went that entire weekend, including the Universal Horrors, I was ready to strip down and I had a pocket full of Crisco. And at no point was I uh, called upon. So oh, I got to rename. You know, I got to rename so, this podcast the Pocket Full of Crisco because it was going to be called the uh, Spooky Season Spectacular. But now parentheses Pocket Full of Crisco. Pocket Full of Crisco. I'm still ready. Is all I'm saying. So if you need a diversion, give me a call. Well, what we're gonna do today? Twelve minutes in. It's good to set the premise. I can talk about more of the houses. This they were pretty yeah, good. Go ahead. Which one do you want to hear about? Uh, I'd like to hear about the Universal Monsters. The Universal Monsters had four of them. Ready? They had Dr. J, HB. These are the notes I made for myself. I can do this. Dr. J is Dr. Jekyll. Mm-hmm. Although, he's kind of the boring one. Well, he was the one I liked. He was the only one no, there. Mr. Hyde's the exciting one. No, there was only Dr. Jekyll. Oh. He was like, hey, guys, welcome <laughs> to my lab. How you doing? What was the second one? HB. Hunchback in Notre Dame. He was on a bungee cord and it came he, bouncing. He told me these yesterday is how I'm able to decipher his oh, code. Yeah? Oh, yeah? Well, then who is Phantom? <laughs> That's a tough one. That is the uh, the Phantom of the Opera, I guess. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. Invisible Man. <laughs> Ooh. Claude Rains. I also wrote down No See Him. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say, that's kind of cheating you out of one. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I think he was in every one of the sets. Yeah. Only sometimes he had the bandages on. So he was the star. In fact, he was probably in all of the houses. He said the Wolfman was there. It turned out that was Mr. Hyde. Oh. After he had transformed, he turned into a same Wolfman. Same idea. Yeah. It was pretty cool. That one got me. I can't remember where it was, but that was one of the houses that got me. The first one was the Yetis. I was turning around to talk to whoever was behind me, and we were near the exit, and I guess we weren't close enough, and the Yeti jumped out right when I was turning, right into the Yeti face. The Yeti was my favorite, I think. <laughs> I've thought it over. It's got a Yeti or not, man. That's great. That's yeah, that's a pun. I know you like puns. Yep. But the Universal one, really fun. We that was the last one we saw. The lines are crazy there. Yeah. So have fun. Standing in line next year. You, with make, me. It, you make it sound so much more fun. We're gonna go see some monsters and I'm gonna have that pocket full of Crisco. So if you wanna get like we can get in the, the one same, house. It's the same pocket full of Crisco. I'm gonna keep it all well until it's used. <laughs> So unless we go and to Nassau together, and Nassau, Nassau, and I uh, need to get you behind the gates, there is no hockey souvenirs in Orlando that I could find because I was supposed to get Sam. Uh, they don't have a team in Orlando. No, they have a team in Miami and they have a team in Tampa. But I mean, not even anywhere. You no, know, why would there be? I don't know. I see Bill stuff all over this idiot state. I, I'm fifty fifty. There's hockey memorabilia or hockey things at the hockey arena in Tampa. Mm, that's a fair point. And I'm, I'm Pretty positive there's none in Florida. In I'm 50-50. There's a hockey arena. Yeah, that's true. All right. So, yeah, if at any point you get bored listening to yourself tell me whatever you're going to tell me about the month of October, I can tell you more about the houses. You can just interject it whenever you feel like All right. They're, they change them every year, too. So you're, you're going to get a different one next year, a different 10 when we go. <laughs> you can keep saying it. Yeah, but I keep saying it. So what we're going to do today is break down the upcoming spooky season for films... Movies? I don't have the third one. Television. Tele there is some TV written in here. All right. And then we'll talk about what we're going to do on the site, which is basically cover these movies. So I guess oh, we did that already. What? What? Who's going to do now? Yeah. And then the podcast. I got some ideas at the end. I have two ideas. So okay. 
So that's double the ideas I have. Two times zero is zero, Pete. I'm math at you again. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to get a math at Pete compilation. My daughter, when I got home yesterday, asked me for math help, and I laughed, and then eventually she laughed too because she realized. <laughs> you taught her uh, subtracting one from a room. <laughs> you just walked away. Ooh, that would have been a good lesson. I if, you knew, if you knew the math If I that. knew the math. <laughs> All right. We're going to start actually in September because – this should be coming out. I'm going to cross my fingers on this one on the 27th. So on the 29th, Saw X is in theaters. That's a big one. Is that X-Men related? Yep. Cool. Yep. I'm in. Do yep. I need to know the other nine? Yeah, you can come right in if you've seen X-Men. Okay. Because you saw X. I did see X, mm-hmm. but not Pearl. It is the 10th Saw movie, which is why it's got the Saw X, but of course it's not Saw 10 because they don't do that. It's like Jason X, even though it's the 10th one. It's annoying. Be honest with you. How many movies have gone to a 10th? All Halloween has, but kind of, because I think the Rob Zombie ones would have been on the 10th, and that's its own separate thing, but they got to 13 either way. Well, I guess where I was going with this is how many have a, you know, like how many could have the number 10, the possibility, but they went with X instead. I think that that's, I think around 2000, anything that came out around then, I don't, I don't think that there's a lot. Yeah, because 10 movies in a franchise is. Oh, well, Fast X. Yep, they went with. The X as well. Sure do. Everyone does. It's annoying. Saw X. I've written down some notes here. It takes place between Saw and Saw 2, which means a prequel. It's, it's not a prequel. It's a kind sequel of. to Saw and a prequel to Saw 10, right. 2 through 9. All right. Do other movies? I've done it with books. Fast and Furious did it. Fast and Furious slipped in. Five's a prequel. Nobody knew that. It's a prequel to Tokyo Drift. But it's also a sequel to the original one, so what is it? it just, they're See, just playing fast and furious with the timeline. Sounds like our podcast. Yeah, it is like our podcast. Does anybody else do that? This one's a prequel to the Cabin in the Woods episode. Oh. Everyone loves a prequel. It was directed by a guy named Kevin Grudert. And what's interesting about him is that he's been involved in all ten Saw movies. He was the editor of Saw 1 through 5 and Jigsaw, which was the seventh movie. No, eighth movie. He was the director of Saw 6 and Saw 3D, which was the seventh movie. And he was an executive producer of Spiral, which was the spinoff with Chris Rock that came out a couple years ago. So, like, at least it's it's all in the house. Like, this, this guy that's actually been up with this franchise for 10 movies. But various roles. Yeah. Two directors. This will be his third directing one. Okay. So, it's, that's nice for a callback. And Tobin Bell's back as John Kramer slash Jigsaw in his most personal mission yet. You see the trailer? I, I, I have seen. The trailer's good. I have seen none of the Saw. I saw the first Saw movie, and I was very excited to see Carrie Elwes because, yay. The trailer looks good. It's uh, he's he's He dies of cancer in the series. Right. You know that. I know that. So this is, obviously, he's still alive, and he goes so it to. it has to be a prequel. Yeah. Well, what a well, sequel to the first one. He uh, he goes to get the tumor removed, and the doctors don't ever remove it, because I think I'm going to assume they know he's a horrible, bad version. And so he takes them all, and he's going to exact his revenge on them for lying to him. And like that actually is pretty decent, I think. All right. Right. And Tobin Bell's great. He makes the series great. Without him, the series kind of just runs. Well, who's the killer after he dies of cancer? I don't remember. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I haven't, and such. I, I haven't watched any of the movies, so I bring, not, well, aside from the first one, which I don't remember. Acolytes and such is my answer. Uh, that same day, there's a movie on Shudder called Nightmare, which is a Norwegian horror film. It's, about a, it's a Nordic folktale about a dream demon and a pregnant woman. Dream demon and a pr- The thing I read was it was basically a cross between Rosemary's Baby and Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, Dream Child. Okay. <laughs> One of the bad ones. Anyone directed of note? Anyone? It's a Norwegian horror film. Well, I watched, I think it was Norwegian Trolls, which was, it came out in the early aughts. Did you ever see it? Hear about it? Nope. Nope. It's pretty good. It, I think they redid it a couple of years ago in the U.S., called Trolls again, but if you can find the Norwegian No, that series has been going for a while. Troll Trolls X is out. It's on my list. Trolls X. <laughs> Sam Rockwell was in the second one, I think. The World Tour. That's coming out in theaters. Another one? Another one of those Trolls movies, because I see the trailer for it every time I go to the movies. And they the little trolls have, you know, at the beginning of the Regals, when they go on that roller coaster, the trolls have taken over the roller coaster, and they're commenting on the roller coaster ride, and it's very annoying. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. That same day, on Video On Demand, the movie Deliver Us comes out, which is another one about someone having babies. It seems to be... Is that a horrific thing, Pete? You have babies. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Well, this woman is having twins, and one is prophesied... That's a horror story. One is prophesied to be the Messiah, and the other is prophesied to be the Antichrist, which is actually fairly interesting. 
I remember if I ever want if I ever had twins, my plan was to name them God and Satan. So I'm like, ah, God and Satan are fighting again. That was the only joke I had for naming my children that. Oh, that was a joke. Yeah, no. good, a good one. Good one. Dude, thanks. I know. So that's that's uh, that'll wrap up September. Religious horror movies mostly miss with me. I forgot everything you were talking about. Fantastic. October second, Halloween begins. We all know about Halloween. It is the superior, no, the inferior Peacock Tober. Yeah, there is. I, I thought there was nothing coming to Peacock. There is one thing coming to Peacock later. We'll get to. It's a movie called Appendage. It's a body horror movie about dealing with anxiety and self doubt. So that sounds fun. <laughs> I don't need all is horror it, to be fun, but Jesus Christ! So, so it's like a teen drama, a YA movie. Anything I don't say are things I don't know about the movies because there's right. there's like forty movies. So I, I have written down enough to explain what the movie is. Uh, let's see. We're into, on, on October 3rd, it's a big day. We got a movie called Creepy Crawly from Thailand. Bug where related? Our foreign correspondent recently visited. That's true. And called in from. Is it bugs? Tell me it's bugs. It is about a local urban legend about a creature who possesses their victims. So no. Oh, bugs. Mm. But mm. Thailand. Uh, the same day, House of Dolls on Video on Demand, D. Wallace, Cujo, E.T., Hills Have Eyes. You can name things, but what, what is D. Wallace? The actress from E.T., e. Cujo, Howling, the Hills Have Eyes. I didn't know if it was a best boy or not. This is a slasher movie about three sisters being stalked by a killer as they try to find the inheritance left behind by their father. Okay, I'm in for that, Yeah, too. That's, that's at least different. Yep. Yeah. You want to sit up a little bit? <laughs> No, I was getting comfy listening to you tell me stories. Next, we have one that I'm really excited about called Mary Had a Little Lamb. It's a slasher movie about true crime podcasters who come across an old lady named Mary who has a big anthropomorphic lamb who tries to murder everyone. All right, I'm in. It may be a man with the lamb head on. I could not tell. I do not care. It sounds incredible. You don't have to keep going. Sold. I, that's what I said. Don't Look Away, a slasher movie about a killer mannequin comes out the same day. And I, I wrote here, I could dig in deeper, but I'm already sold. <laughs> I think there might be some blink from Doctor Who rules going on. Where if you look away, I it think can so. move. The so trailer hints stay. at it very largely, but never outright states it, because I think they don't want you to be like, this is the Doctor Who thing. Okay. It's a good premise. I feel like it's been used elsewhere, too, though. Probably. It was pretty great on Doctor Who. Yeah. And uh, the, still more that day. On Video on Demand, The Mean One, the Grinch movie from last year that wasn't very good. I don't remember the Grinch movie, but now that you say it, I kind of do. There's a review on the site that I wrote in rhyme. Oh, yeah. That's why I remember it. Yeah, I was very excited about that. And then by the end of the week, four more reviews came out from people written in rhyme better than mine. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, you were first. Because I hate everything I write, so I mine was fine. It ended in a funny way. I, 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 I think you should read it because I read it. The joke at the end was funny to me. So let that let that be a testament to how good it was because I read it. There you go. I didn't even know you knew we had a site. I find it every once in a while by accident, and I get really excited because it's new. Three Blu-ray releases that day: Craving, which is a movie I just watched for the site. It's a monster movie that's really interesting, and you can read that on the site. That's a good one. It doesn't I'm go not the way going you expect. To read it, so why don't you tell me about it now? Because it's a non-spoiler review, so I'm not going to spoil it here. Is it the sequel to Ravenous? Craving the prequel. Yeah, it sounds more like a prequel than a sequel. Like everyone, the first prequel I remember was Raiders. No, not Raiders. What's the prequel to Raiders? Temple of Doom. Yes. However old I was when that came out, I said, "Hey, wait a minute." I hate that movie. I know you do. <laughs> I just I can't like it. I love Short Round, but I hate the movie. I was just watching everything all the time. Everywhere this morning. Oh, no good. short round. There was an answer then. You watched everything everywhere all the time this morning. Just a little bit. Yeah. Talk to me comes out on Blu-ray. I want to watch that movie so badly so we can do the review. It is my podcast. favorite movie of the year. It is the front runner for the Scare Value Awards, which we'll have to do on the podcast too. It's a front runner for the Scare Value Award for Best Picture. I don't know what's going to catch it because it's better than anything I saw last year. And last year was a great year in horror. Evil Dead Rise. That's not as good as Talk to Me. No, but you said what could catch it, and that could. We will have a podcast coming sooner or later, whenever we can get Ken on from Taiwan. To, which is any time. It's just a matter of me setting up a time and finding a schedule that is normal. Yes. And this is actually a, a big one for Blu-ray. Prey is coming to Blu-ray after being locked in the Hulu 
a dungeon for over a year and everyone was like when is this getting a physical release because not everybody wants to get hulu but everybody wants to see the movie so it's actually a big deal that it's getting one because hulu doesn't really put their stuff out on blu-ray all the time so it's good for everyone definitely go see it it's one of the best movies of 2022 Prey was really i like that movie a lot yeah that's a i'm trying to get kitty to watch it with me but for some reason she's hesitant it's on hulu right now so if you have hulu just pop it on and watch it it's definitely worth watching and then I'm, i'm glad it's getting a physical release though because there's all these collectors that love the Predator movies. They have all of them. They're like, I can't own this movie. Like, not. It might be the best of the of the Predator franchise, even though it's not I there. Don't, I don't disagree, and it's right. It's at least the second best one oh, by a lot. Yeah, it, I'm trying to think of everything else there was, and nothing compares to it. They even did the rare trick where they do callbacks and they work or call forwards because it's a prequel. Everyone loves a prequel, but they when when uh, they use the line. Uh, if it bleeds, we can kill it. But it was awesome. And that's not easy to do. No. All, they, they, you're right. There were all the callbacks, but done in fun ways. They all were fun. And that that one was like, I sat there like, holy shit. They did something that I didn't even think was possible. They took an iconic line and they made it great. Because <laughs> Evil Dead Rise had a couple of callbacks. Yeah. Some they, worked, some, of them some didn't. Yeah. Right. This one, I think all of them were. Yeah. Yeah. It's it 100% worth watching. The fact that I saw this movie probably a year ago and I still remember a lot of the beats says yeah. it was a pretty good movie. It's great. And it's, it was one of our top 10 movies on the site for that. You know game. what? That's going to be my new, I guess, recommendation list is can I? how much do I remember about the movie? You know what? I think it was even one of the top five. I'm top trying five to remember when I did the Scare Value Awards, the five that head. were awarded. And I'm, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you just give them a name. Well, I'd ask and, you, but you watched three movies from the year. So your, your awards are going to be a little different. They were all pretty good, right? Yeah, they're all pretty I good. I didn't like Megan. Was that this year? That was this year. I didn't like that one that much. You've turned on that movie without watching it again. It's weird. No, I have. Because I got, you know, I do like, what's her face, Williams. Allison Williams. Uh-huh. I like her. So fuck that doll, I guess. Yeah, it was disappointing. That's all I'm going to say. I did, for speaking of dolls, I did forget two houses. You were right. There was a, I knew it. There was a, a child's met. playhouse, Chucky. Oh, nice. But I heard it wasn't that good. Oh. And then there, there was a blue singer sold his soul to the devil, and you got to go through the like bar taverns or whatever the journey. We didn't go to those two, so we did eight out of the ten. And that's based on a real story. Is that the guy who sold his soul at the crossroads? That is it. I don't think he was at a crossroads. I don't know. I didn't actually go no. in the house. So expert reporting as always. Those are that's why I forgot the two because I have nothing to say. I was told that they're not bad, but they're the you know the weakest of the ten. Which was disappointing because Child's Play. Yeah. There were a lot of horror t-shirts too. The, oh man, I forgot who was, what I saw the most of. The most was Stranger Things. There were a ton of people with Stranger Donnie Things. Most? Who? <laughs> Ralph Mouth from <laughs> Happy Days. Our references are amazing. Oh man, that, that was a tough one for me. I was not a Happy Days guy. Me neither. Me neither. I know, but you remember, you remember that reference. I do remember that reference. I just know the Jumping the Shark. And Mark and Mindy. I'm a reference guy. I'm not a know things guy. Uh, I name dropped Ethel Merman, and then we couldn't remember who she was or what she had done. And I looked it up. I don't think she was a swimmer. I've convinced myself that she's not a person. Oh, that hasn't happened yet. That's in a future episode. Well, I don't think she's real anymore. I think I just made up that name. I think it was one of the witches in The Wizard of Oz. Mm. Ethel Merman. She was the Wicked Witch of the South the Ocean. Wicked the Southern the Ocean. South. The, witch, the Wicked Witches were in the East and the West. The North and the South were the Good Witches. I don't think the South can be good. I don't even think the South had a witch. I don't remember. She was in Halloween 3. <laughs> that's, what, that's what was going on. Yep. Tis the season. On Thursday, October 5th, The Boogeyman comes to Hulu, and it'll be on Blu-ray on October 10th. That's the Stephen King adaptation that wasn't, it was all right. It just seemed better doing the same thing, but it's fine. I fine for even, a spooky season watch. I don't even remember the Stephen King book or story. I think it was a short story. Okay. And then we get to October 6th, the biggest horror day of the year. Why is it the biggest horror day of the year? Everyone's dumping their movies on October 6th for some reason. The Exorcist Believer hits theaters with Ellen Burstyn returning after 50 years to play Chris McNeil. And I've seen the trailers. I've read enough about it. That is the only interesting fact I have about this movie. Well, after you see the movie, you can go to the Halloween Horror House and it'll probably be really creepy or really lame. I don't know, depending on how it translates. It's directed by David Gordon Green, who did the recent Halloween trilogy of Diminishing Returns. Is he related to Joseph Gordon-Levitt? That's how names work, yeah. That's how I think they work. Yeah. They are, they're fraternal brothers who both took wives' names. 
he married a Mrs. Green in the library <laughs> with a noose. I was going to go noose too. <laughs> Although the revolver was my favorite. And Joseph Gordon Levitt uh, <laughs> married a, a Mr. Levitt. Didn't of know that course. about him, but yeah. good for him. Love is love. Congratulations yeah. to the happy couples. That's right. Pet Cemetery Bloodlines on Paramount Plus. Everyone loves a prequel. Everyone loves a prequel. This one centers on Judd Crandall, who was Fred Gwynn's character in the original movie, who oh. I feel like told us everything we need to know about what's going to happen. He was the neighbor, prequel. right? Yes. Okay. He's the one with the line. And here's the thing. We brought this up on the podcast before when I said, do you remember the line from the famous line from that movie? And he said, you didn't. They're using an advertising for this. Sometimes dead is better. <laughs> I thought the line was sometimes they come back wrong. I think they always come back wrong, though. So that wouldn't even be a, a, an accurate line. I don't believe that to be true, but I can't think of a movie where they don't come back wrong. No, in this in Pet Cemetery, they always come back wrong. Yeah, but I'm going broader than that. The multiverse now. I the movie early reviews for this are mixed to poor, and I think I understand why. I think the movie's probably going to be fine, but it's going to have a little bit of solo in there. Here's everything we know about Judd Crandall and the story he tells, and so now we have to put it in there because immediately there's a dog, and I'm like, I know what's going to happen to that dog. Right. <laughs> it's just funny that they do that. How was the remake that came out a few years ago received? I think okay. Yeah. You All know, right. the original Pet Cemetery is not even that well received. It's just people like it because it's, it's uh, a big it, hit movie. It was a Stephen King back when it was yeah. the height of Stephen King. I like it. I like the remake and I like the first one. I heard about the beginning and end of the remake, so I don't need to see it. I'm good. Yeah, I like the remake, action. Totally Killer on Amazon Prime Video. What's that? That is the time travel slasher movie. Ooh. When uh, Sabrina herself from The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. The uh, teenage witch? She is the daughter of a final girl, like a real life final girl, whose friends all get murdered by a slasher killer in the 80s, and she ends up accidentally time traveling back to when that happens. And that sounds really good to me. I like time tra- I like mixing up my horror genres. I think it's a horror comedy, slasher comedy. Like, that's it's usually going to work out. That's kind of what I like if it's not a monster. Shudder has VHS 85, the sixth installment of the long-running found footage series. And this one's set in 85, so all of the stories will be of like found footage from 85. Well, well, I've never watched any of them. I don't even know what they're about. So real, what is the VHS series? It's always, the conceit is that somebody has found a series of videotapes from the past, and they watch them all, and then something creepy is happening in their real timeline as they're watching these videos from whatever year the videos are from they they used to be modern then they went back to 94 99 and this will be 85 and whatever's happening is tied into what they saw in the video sometimes okay so it, they they're it, loose with it okay. this one has really good directors though they don't always do that the last one had the guy that made deadstream and his uh joseph winters and vanessa winters they made deadstream and they made a, a similar found footage thing for that that was really good okay and and that stream was fantastic yes and so was the the short okay this has five directors doing their their shorts david bruckner who did last year's hellraiser reboot which i liked and he also did the best segment of 2015 southbound which if you've never seen southbound i recommend Uh, southbound it's a really good anthology movie oh okay I like anthology. We just, this one tied to better, get better together than anyone I've ever seen, and he had the best segment by far. I thought, and, and I think I liked the whole thing, and his was like a standout. So I'm excited to see that. All right, cool. And he also did 2017's The Ritual, which is a which is a movie I think from England that I remember seeing that I liked a lot. All right. And Scott Derrickson does one who directed Sinister and the Black Phone last year, as well as the first Doctor Strange movie. The most recent Sinister, you mean? Wait, no, we watched Insidious for this podcast. Yeah, you get this wrong every time. I, and there's Malice, I think, is another one. Is that a movie? I get that one confused, too. Malice is an 80s movie with Alec Baldwin. Yeah, and then there's another one, too, like Sinister, perhaps. That's the one we're talking about. Are you talking about Malignant? Yeah, there yeah. we go. Like a tumor. Malignant James Wan. Right, who also did Insidious. Who also did Insidious. And Fast and the Furious. And Fast and Furious. And The Conjuring. And The Conjuring. It's a good thing they put the in front of the conjuring, or else you get lumped in with all the other ones you got here. <laughs> Natasha Kermani, who uh, did the well received movies Lucky and Imitation Girl. I actually own Imitation Girl and haven't watched it. I did see Lucky, and it was really good. And then Mike P. Nelson, who has to take that name so he's not confused with the MST3K guy, I guess. Yep. Who directed uh, The D- Domestics and the recent Wrong Turn reimagining, which I actually liked. There's more than one Wrong Turn movie? There's like six Wrong Turn movies, and they really? did a reboot. And I like the reboot pretty good. I've only ever seen the original. With Very Eliza different. Dushku. Very different. This one's about a cult, and I thought it was really well done. 
they don't get lost in what's the wrong turn then? I mean, you can still go the wrong way. But now they find a cult. It's, it was a good movie. Okay. And then Gigi Saul Guerrero, who directed the, we've talked about it before, the best Hulu Into the Dark movie, Culture Shock, with Barbara Crampton. And, Barbara Crampton. And a segment in this year's Satanic Hispanics. So that's five really strong directors to sign up and do an 80s-themed found footage segment. So it, the earlier buzz on that is very, very strong. All right. Well, that's the fun of anthologies. Yes. Who comes into them. Yes. One of the, one of the houses was one of those cult things where the house was a cult and, or the yeah. it was a like they worship the moon and they get a blood moon so now they turn on any outsiders or unbelievers you see what i mean though it's october 6th and that's exorcist believer in theaters pet cemetery bloodlines and paramount plus that's paramount plus's big offering totally killer which is amazon prime's big offering and vhs 85 shutter has something coming out every week every right. friday but that's the, i think that's their big one so that's all on the same day that's gonna be a busy day for well, people like me and that's the thing you got the whole month to watch it but then you got to fit in all the classics you want to watch and it's well, a problem because you can't fit anything in anymore we're right? only up to yes, the sixth no. we're only up to the sixth and we're only halfway through the sixth so this is a busy month it's a good thing for horror as a as a general concept right yes no. i wish they'd spread it out further there's no reason spooky season can't be all of september too Feels like this is the dead area for movies anyway. Just what put about out Labor Day. Movies. Can't be impinging on Labor Day. I don't know what Labor Day is. I don't. It could be in April for all I know. It might be. One of them's in the spring. One of them's in the fall. Zombie Town on Hulu is a horror comedy with supporting roles for the spies like us themselves, Dan Aykroyd and Chevy Chase. Oh no! Uh, a cursed film turns a town into a city of the undead. Actually, sounds pretty good. Didn't you say you think it was young adult based? I think I think it is because it's got I think it's got teen leads. Oh, okay. And I know Dan Aykroyd plays the director of the movie they have to seek out or something like that. And I'm going to guess Chevy Chase is just bumbling in the background somewhere. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, the tank is on Hulu, which is a creature feature that I reviewed for the site with great creature effects, and they're not used nearly enough. Oh. It's too slow. And then when you get the good stuff, it's like why wasn't this just happening the whole time? Because the creature is incredible, way, 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 way better than you'd be led to believe by how kind of just routine and boring the beginning of the movie is so it does get really fun it just takes a long time to get okay there. and then vindicta on vod and it'll be on showtime later this month a young paramedic tries to survive her first night on the job as a mass killer remains on the loose jeremy piven and sean astin it's a buddy cop movie i don't think either of them are the young paramedic but good for them getting what's the name of that one vindicta i thought it was a biography Invictus. Of Vin Diesel's sister. Of Vin. That's your name? Yep. Family. Family. It's all, it's all about family. On Tuesday, October 10th, Caddy Hack comes to VOD and Blu-ray October 24th. You know what? You can stop right there. You're in? I'm. It's a pun. I'm in. Mutated gophers killing golf course caddies. Pete, 75 minutes long. All right. We're, oh, I'm speechless. They made that one for you. That also on Shutter that day will be the last drive-in special about the 45th anniversary of Halloween, where we'll watch Halloween together and talk about Halloween. You're looking at me when you say that? <laughs> I'll watch it with Joe Bob. Oh, oh, Joe Bob. I like Joe Bob. I love Joe Bob. I'll watch it with Joe Bob and the Monster uh, fam. I thought that was Taylor. No, Lady Gaga's fans. They're little monsters. Oh, I thought that was Fred Savage. <laughs> that was Lupita Nyong'o. Podcast, podcast guest, Lupito Nyong'o. <laughs> By guest, I mean we talked about her that time. That's, that counts. On October 12th, Thursday, October 12th, Netflix's Fall of the House of Usher series starts. Mike Flanagan's new miniseries. And because you have to ask me every goddamn time, he did The Haunting of Hill House, Dr. Sleep, Oculus, and that uh, good Ouija movie. I never saw any of the Ouija movies. It's got very strong early reviews. I like it. Eight episodes. Those are uh, Poe adaptations in a modern setting. Oh, I don't know as much Poe as I feel like Neither I should. Neither do I. Neither well, do I? I figured, but I, I I know a little. I read The Fall of the House of Usher. It's it's loosely based on that and other well, stories. It's, a, it's kind of short, so I yeah. imagine they're going to just go spread it out for us. But his stuff is always very well made, even if it's not always what I like. I love Haunting of Hill House. One of the, I was going to say, you always say it to me. One of these times, it's on my list. It legitimately might be the scariest thing people that someone's made in the last 10 years it it is genuinely very scary see now that's gonna i after going through that strange i haven't watched stranger things since season one yeah. which i really liked 
but the house make it, it acted for me as a really good advertisement to go watch the show because whatever season one through four things have changed a lot on that show i have yeah. no idea what they are but well they oh, take so long that every time i think the kids are 40 now they possibly but it looked like a, there's a bunch of kids in armor fighting things in like a post-apocalyptic world i'm like this is fascinating so it's a good trailer for someone like me there's a friday the 13th in october pete yeah and we what got, does that mean for us? Nothing. All right. <laughs> Our podcast goes out on Wednesday. We're safe. Uh, the Conference on Netflix, a Swedish horror comedy about employees at a work retreat hunted by a masked killer. It looked okay. Yeah. Shudder has The Puppet Man, which I believe mm-hmm. is actually debuting here in Buffalo the week before at North Park. But I'm not going to go because it's going to be on Shudder the week later. All right. A girl starts to believe her convicted father's claims of innocence when the people around her start to die in mysterious ways. Something controls their bodies like a puppet man, and uh, they kill themselves. And the trailer is really good, but no way tied to the Puppet Master franchise. No, okay, no, this is the Puppet Man, Puppet Man, Dad, Puppet Man. It's a sequel to Pinocchio. <laughs> oh man, it should be. It should be. Oh, that'd be a great third act reveal. That Geppetto is there. That's the grave of Geppetto, and he's going to visit. Yeah, it's a finally father on VOD that day. Dear David. Based on a viral Twitter thread, and I stopped researching at that point because I didn't care anymore. Except to learn, Pete, Justin Long plays the head of BuzzFeed. I like Justin Long. I do, too. The horror king, Justin Long. Horror, horror icon, Justin Long. So he's got himself into spooky season. There's a VOD movie called Dark Harvest. Set in 1963, Sawtooth Jack rises from the cornfields and heads towards town as a gang of 18-year-olds stand ready to slaughter the murderous scarecrow before midnight. This had me at Sawtooth Jack. I am intrigued by every word of that. Yeah, it's it's a if the movie's no good, whoever their copywriter was was excellent because it got me very invested in the story. It really did. A VOD movie called The Herd. After an accident, a couple find themselves caught between warring militias and a herd of the undead. And the trailer was actually really good for this one. Are they like deer? Yep. Okay. Yep. It's at the beginning of Train to Busan when uh, the deer gets the hit. What? The Tron de Busain. Oh, yeah, yeah. The the, uh, the deer gets hit and then comes back, and we never see him again, even though he's a zombie deer, and that's kind of an interesting subplot. I forgot all about this that. This is where they go. All right. They go to... Uh, that would be pretty cool. Yep. And the last thing that day, and there's two more things that day, there's a VOD movie called Into the Fire, where Amber Heard plays a doctor in the 1890s, and I'm going to stop right there, because <laughs> I'll believe Puppet Man's, and I'll believe Sawtooth Jack's, and I'll believe Mannequin's. I'm not going to believe Amber Heard was a doctor in the 1890s. Maybe she's the herd they were talking about in the last movie. The herd with a D in parentheses. Get caught between. Yeah. And the Creepshow TV series returns to Shudder that day, which I've seen very little of. I saw one episode. It had Barbara Crampton in it. It was great. Oh, I was, was going to say. Now, I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast before, but uh, Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. Is the Crypt, like, the Crypt Keeper's not around anymore, and I really like him. There's a rights issue. Is that what's going on? Did with not it? read the article. Did see it come across my feed recently that, that John Kassir, who does the voice of the, the Crypt Keeper, Crypt Keeper, was explaining what the problem is, why we don't see it anymore, and why oh. it doesn't even—it's not airing on HBO Max or whatever they call it now. It just—it just doesn't exist anymore. That's too bad because that was really fun, and that was one of those things I watched as you know, right in my formative years of. I mean, uh, you'd think that if like Shutter who does a creep show show and creep show has a name too, but tales from the crypt has a bigger name I, or doesn't because creep, does. creep show back in the day. I always thought that was like a rip off of tales from the crypt. Is that true? False. I don't know when things came out or how they relate. I to believe there was a tales from the crypt movie first, but the show was well after creep show. Yeah. And I don't know which comic. I, I think tales from the crypt was a comic from EC comics before anything, but well, I'm not sure when I was a kid, tales from the crypt was, you know the fun at least for me that was the one that i enjoyed more i like creep show they had good stuff but yeah but they were also supposed to be stephen king based and i don't believe the series is okay so Eh. yeah i mean who knows the guy's written so many goddamn things it's impossible to keep track of and that's just under the name stephen king that's right and when he's not um proving that his son is innocent of i was gonna say it's it's no 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 reason no surprise his son became a a murderer because he uh, He was innocent he wasn't around to yeah we'll see I feel like we're not done getting Lady in the Dunes updates. Yeah, I think we're, we've case closed. Sunday, October 15th on Hulu. Slaughterhouse. I want to see that. Well, on you can my, see it. It's on my list. On well, October 15th. 
Well, I can't see it, but somebody else could. You can. Anyone can see it on October 15th if they have Hulu. And I liked Slother House. All right. It's a monster. Oh, that's where the sloth does increasingly fun murders. Yes. And more complex. It's very funny to me. All right. On Tuesday, October 17th, on Video On Demand, Three Blind Mice. Yes. Just like Mary Had a Little Lamb, the woods have three giant blind anthropomorphic mice out for blood. Is this a Winnie the Pooh kind of thing? Yeah, but it seems more competent than that. Does it? Yeah. I don't, you're just telling words to me, so I have no way to judge. I saw the trailer, and it All seemed right. more competent than that. I don't know. Killer mannequins and lamb people and blind mice. We're getting a lot of monsters. I know, but you, you know, sometimes I just can't help but think that horror movies are fucking incredible. <laughs> you don't get that. And there's no like Adam Sandler comedy where a mannequin comes to life. Oh, there should be. There probably is. There he, is. Does, he does a lot of movies for Netflix now. That's I haven't true. watched any of them. That's true. And on Blu-ray, Haunted Mansion, the bad Disney movie that almost made me cry I in theaters. I just went on the Haunted Mansion ride, and it was really fun. You can read the review on the site of how Lakeith Stanfield almost made me cry in the middle of one of the worst movies I've said. <laughs> it's that bad? It's not good. It's too long. The ride is fun. It's it's like, it, you know what it's like? It's like watching the ride if you, you have to have no fun while doing it. Oh, what? Yeah. All these special effects and stuff, and you just don't care. Was it Eddie? There was an Eddie Murphy one not too yes. long ago, correct? You, you've discovered this for the second time on the podcast. Every time is a new time, a day of revelations. October 19th, one night only in theaters. Onyx the Fortuitous and the Talisman of Souls. A trailer I saw at the theater that looks pretty funny, honestly. Reviews are mixed, but it looks, it looks fun. But it stars Pete, Jeffrey Combs, and Barbara Crampton. Oh, man. H.P. Lovecraft... Mm-hmm. Icons themselves. Jeffrey Combs, I believe, plays the the main the, the main character is like a nerdy teenager. Although he seems older than a teenager, I think that's the joke. And he gets summoned to help the the king of their Dungeons and Dragons bullshit, who's played by Jeffrey Combs. And Barbara Crampton plays his hot mom. <laughs> and it's like, it's not the same director, right? No, that guy's dead. Oh, we'll get to him in a minute. Though. October twentieth. I'm excited. What's the name of that one? Onyx, the Fortuitous, and the Talisman of Souls. All right. I want to see that one. On Friday, October 20th, in limited theatrical release, Malibu Horror Story. This has a lot of things that I think you'd like in it, but one thing I know you won't. Amateur paranormal investigators look into a 10-year-old case of disappearing teens. They discover an ancient curse. That seems like right up your alley. The investigators, the... It does. It's, it's incorporates a lot of found footage. But the earlier reviews are strong. They said they do a nice twist on it. The only found footage movie I've really enjoyed was Deadstream. Yeah. Well, they said this one mixes it in with real regular stuff, and it does it in an interesting, fun way. All right. I do like that investigative horror when you don't know the secret ahead of time, so it's just boring and you yeah. know, watching them find out things. Also on October 20th, on Hulu, coming up big. Huluween's coming up big. All right, Huluween. Cobweb, which I told you about yesterday when I picked you up from the airport from your journey to orlando would, would it surprise you to learn that i forgot everything yeah. you told me yesterday it is an underseen spooky season gem i recommend it fully it should it deserved way better than it got it got dumped on barbenheimer weekend into Ooh, one theater in niagara falls time slot it wasn't even in regular theaters it was like in one theater in niagara falls that i didn't know existed and i drove out there on barbieheimer day on barbieheimer i day. drove out and saw cobweb that's most holy of days yes i did see oppenheimer that day too but i drove out and saw so you cobweb. saw cobbenheimer Sure. Oppenweb? Cobweb. Dealer. Mm. Opweb. Opweb. There That's we go. It. We got there. And Shudder has Night of the Hunted. A sniper terrorizes a woman at a remote gas station in the middle of the night. Did not see a trailer, but it sounds at least it sounds different than all these other movies. It does. I feel any of those, like one set, like Phone Booth, was that with Colin yeah. Farrell? Yeah, yeah. It really hinges on the actor, so. Yeah. At least it's different. And on Video On Demand, the movie Kill Her, but all one word, even though the H is capitalized. Kind of like my Nick Age. A bachelorette party in the woods is disrupted by a killer and a horrible secret. It looked kind of fun. The trailer looked kind of fun. Okay. And Joe Bob will be back on Shutter that night for a double feature for Joe Bob's Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. So, so that, that'll be looking out for. On October 24th, it's a Tuesday, on Blu-ray... Meg to the trench. Not good. I want Jason Statham to be the Jason Statham from Spy all the time. In every role. Every role. I, I can't disagree. Having recently seen Spy, it's it's the role of a lifetime. He doesn't need to change. Stop acting. You've got it. I agree. And we're, we're getting into the end of the month here, but there's some really good stuff on the last weekend. On Friday, October 27th, 
Five Nights at Freddy's hits theaters and Peacock the same day. So there's your Peacock Tober. Five Nights at Freddy's was a video game? Yes. Okay. It's Willy's Wonderland, but it's what Willy's Wonderland was ripping off. Willy's uh, Wonderland with Nick Cage. I know what Willy's Wonderland is, yeah. and I'm sorry. Even if it came later, it doesn't rip anything off. They just prequeled it. It's basically the same exact thing. But Five Nights at Freddy's prequeled it. It has Matthew Lillard. I do like Matthew Lillard. And I think Josh Hutcherson is the... I met Shaggy and Velma while I was at Universal Studios. I got a picture to prove it. And the mystery machine. Did you? Did Shaggy say his famous line, it wasn't me? No, he didn't go with oh. that one. He said we had cool t-shirts. You could you just ask him to say, could you just say it wasn't me? I didn't. Damn it. We were trading bracelets with Velma. Shudder also has, on that day, October 27th, a Spanish horror film with solid early reviews called When Evil Lurks. Two brothers attempt to exercise a demon from a neighboring farm. They screw it up and end up infecting the entire town. It's described as violent and mean-spirited, even though that setup sounds hilarious. Was the demon out of shape? Yep. Yeah. They screw it up. They get him fatter. Oh, God. That, you know what they were doing? They were feeding him chicken and rice because they thought it would, it's, that's how you gain weight. That's after midnight, too. When I used to work at the pizza place many, many moon, many, many wolf, werewolf cycles ago, there was a... a a kid that was working there and he would just eat chicken and rice every day. And he's like, I don't know how I can't, I don't, I'm not losing weight. I'm eating healthy. And I'm like, brother, I was like, you got to eat more of that chicken and rice. Cause I'm an asshole. That's fantastic. <laughs> yep. And Netflix has another Spanish horror movie called sister death about a girl with supernatural powers who goes to teach at a former convent turned all girls school. It's a prequel to a 2017 movie called Veronica. Veronica was well reviewed. And this is from the same director. All right. This is a, this is a prequel lean. Now, there's a couple things after the 27th, but this is the last, I think, really big one that's exciting. And I think this is the one that, of all these movies, is the one that's going to excite you the most. It's called Suitable Flesh on Video On Demand. It's got great early reviews. It stars Heather, Heather Graham, Barbara Crampton, directed by Joe Lynch, who made the movie Mayhem, which is really good if you ever saw that. I never did. Okay. It's really good. It's Lovecraft inspired by Ooh. The Thing on the Doorstep. Ooh. Dread Central called it a gory, horny, outlandish Lovecraft adaptation that's a must-watch for fans of raunchy 80s horror. Well, that's me. That's, I think, the one I'm most excited about the entire spooky season. Barbara Crampton is everywhere, right? She produced like, this, too. Well, this is the one that it does call back to, or at least uh, uh, honor, the Stuart Gordon movies that we talked about recently on the podcast, Reanimator. And it's done in that vein, I believe. That's what it sounds like. Yes. Except Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton are in well, a Barbara different Crampton movie. Barbara is in this movie. She's in this one, but the two of them yes. are in a... Yeah. Different one. It seems like they both should have been in this one. Yeah. But Barbara Crampton, you pointed out, has she been always this active or is this like a resurgence for her? She's been more active since you're next. Okay. So, so this is kind of 10, 12 a, years that's she's been. Three movies that she's in in this listing you've told me for the month of October? Uh, I think two. Mm, I, I brought her up for something else, but I think she's right. been in two of these movies. Well, I've heard her. Oh, no, I said that she was in the one episode of, uh, of Creep Show I watched, but that was years ago counts so she's getting a lot of work this month yeah well that's of all the movies we talked about that's the one i think i'm the most interested in and the reviews are excellent for it there well i want to see oh there are a couple in there that i'm really interested in a gory horny outlandish lovecraft adaptation that's a must watch for fans of raunchy 80s horror they made this for us they listened to our podcast and they put this they swept this into production real quick but if you remember the thing on the doorstep and her I, yeah it's very short i read that one it's very short but it's, also it's not gory and no. it's not horny no it's unless loose. you're into like fish things it's a loose one i believe the plot i, I tried to read as little as possible on it because i was like you had me at this right tagline or this own review i didn't read the review i saw it on rotten tomatoes i think it's about uh the, continuing the theme of the these uh doctors being horrible in these uh Lovecraft adaptations. I believe it's about Heather Graham as a, as a psychiatrist or a doctor who sleeps with a patient with multiple personalities and it, things get out of control. I mean, of course, what does that do with the thing on the doorstep? I don't know. All right. So who wins for most coming out or the most interesting? I got, I got a couple oh, more to get. You got more coming Just, still, but that was the last big one. But on Monday, October 30th, Shudder will have hell house LLC origins, the Carmichael manor, a prequel. Everybody loves it to a series of movies that I've skipped completely. All so right. I don't know anything about them. Uh, Prequel, baby. But if you like those, this is like the fifth one, so they must be doing something. So if you like those Hell, Hell, Hell House LLC movies, there's a new one. On Tuesday, October 31st, on Video On Demand, there's an action horror movie with Tara Reid in it, which is maybe the spookiest thing of Spooky Season. Tara Reid from the early 2000s? 
Yeah, late 90s, early 2000s, Tara Reid. What was one movie she was in? Urban Legend turned 25 yesterday. Urban Legend turned 25 yesterday. I don't know that one. Urban Legend with Jared Leto. Oh, Jared Leto. Or is it Leto? Who cares? No one. I can't read, just like Jordan Catalano. Brain? Yeah. Are you brain? <laughs> it's that reference. We're getting closer. Everyone. A vampire hunter in the desolate West forms a posse to seek and destroy the blood-sucking master. 80 minutes long. I know. Right. It's, got enough, it's got enough there. It's a Western. It's vampires. It's 80 minutes. The last thing that I have written down. Now, I never got anything from Screenbox. I never got their release list because they like to give it to be late. So there'll be a couple more things, but we won't have them on the podcast. We will review them on the site, though. Nanny Hits Blu-ray. It was an Amazon Prime movie from last year that made me very sad. So look out for that one. Nanny? It was good. It just made me very sad. Are there children involved in this movie? <laughs> for a time. Oh man. <laughs> it's about an it's about an immigrant who moves to America to make a better life, but has to leave her child behind until she can get the money. And uh it's a sad one. It's gonna it's gonna throw it out. Nope. I, was, I was very sad when it was over. So it's good. I, it's just sad. I can't watch anything with, you know, children being hurt or tortured or yeah. anything. In that Yeti haunted house, there are two incidents of child murder and I laughed. It was deserved and kind of funny. Well, one was deserved, but the other one was Sam. <laughs> no, your kids didn't go with you. Yeah, a rare escape. And uh, you were gone, what was it, Thursday through Monday. Monday? Remind me again, what day was your son's actual birthday? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I Which, don't have to because I saw a picture of him sitting at a table alone waiting for his dad to come home on his birthday. Yeah, I got a pretty angry message on my text thing of that day, too. We celebrated his birthday the week before, but he doesn't forget. No, and he doesn't forget. And he's going to be bigger than all of us sooner than later. My one rule was to come back with a Florida Panthers souvenir. Orlando doesn't have any. Tell them about how they made you pinky swear that you wouldn't go to Disney World the day you were at Disney World. Well, I wasn't quite at Disney World. But that morning, over the Zoom, they had their little pinkies to the screen. And they were asking me to pinky swear with them that I would not go to Disney without them. We were already going to Disney that day, and I didn't know what to do, and I just kind of froze and stared at their pinkies pressed against the screen. And apparently I froze so long, they thought the call got dropped, and they hung up on me. You, you couldn't explain to them that you didn't make the itinerary? I could have, but I panicked. <laughs> Later on, Sam called me by video chat. Now, follow me here. We were at the park, and I was wearing Mickey Mouse ears. I don't know why I picked up. <laughs> And then we looked at each other, and I saw his face change. And he, I said, oh, no, I can't hear you. And I pushed the phone to my shirt, and then I hung up on him. Happy birthday, son. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, so that's the end of spooky season. We'll, we'll cover that in a second. Uh, but the fun won't end there, because November 8th through 12th on the website, and I'm sure a little bit on the podcast, I'm, I'm going to say we, but I'm going to cover the Anomaly Film Festival in Rochester, which last year had the... U.S. debut of Skinner Inc., which was a giant hit, and it had uh, The Harbinger, which which came out last year, which was a great movie, and it had Satanic Hispanics, which didn't even come out until like two weeks ago in some theaters. So you get you get an early look at some good horror movies at the Anomaly. Their their history shows that they have some good movies there. I'm gonna go to some of them. Yeah, I, yeah sure. I hope so. Okay. I really wanted to go to the one that was here, like mm-hmm. two miles away. Yeah, and you I, didn't I make it. I, oh, it was tough. Yeah. Movies are on late, and I'm sleepy a lot. So the highlights of spooky season? Well, I'm saying, which channel do you think wins it? Oh, for Hulu. This? Hulu, by far? Hulu. They have, because because Slaughterhouse and Cobweb. That's a one-two punch you can't come back from. It's pretty great. Okay. I mean, Shudder has something every week, too, but a lot of it's foreign. I don't mind that, but some people are not going to watch it. Yeah. yeah everyone else kind of just has some one stuff. thing. All right. But Hulu's got, like, every week they're putting out a pretty good one. Halloween, they sunk the peak October, who was their challenger last year. And they have, I mean, Appendage, which I don't, we'll see what it's about on the second. Uh, they also had No One Will Save You that came out this past week. The oh. review should be up the same day as this. I've seen, it's always on the front page of Hulu, so yeah. I've seen so that they, one. They, they, Just the name. They do their work for Spooky Season. The other ones don't so much anymore. Shutter does. Okay, well, good. I have Hulu now as part of the Disney Plus package. Yeah, prices are going up. Of course they are. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. It's a pretty good spooky season overall. I wish they'd spread this stuff out. Because like I look at the sixth and it's like I gotta review four movies that day. Maybe five. Oh, I see what's happening. Five. Yeah. Like a whole week of reviews. And I'm like, ah, do you know how long that takes me to do? 
you'd like it spread out longer. Yeah. It's so a long time. Yeah, it'd be great. It'd be great if it's every day you could put out a movie. Too bad. You work one month a year. I know. It's pretty tough. <laughs> Speaking of the podcast in October, there are two things that I desperately want to do. Now, we never really accomplish any of the things in the time we mean to do them. So look for this in a couple of years. Next, uh, next October. October 11th is a Wednesday. It is also the 49th anniversary of a very controversial movie on this podcast. One of the great movies of all time. One of the most influential and important films in the history of not just horror, but film itself. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I think you meant to say Poltergeist. It's time to find out how many bananas Pete gives Texas Chainsaw Massacre on October 11th. We're gonna watch it. We're gonna we're gonna do an we're gonna, I want to do an episode by the 11th so we can put it out on the 11th for the 49th anniversary of the movie. All right. And then I gotta watch that. I don't like that movie. October 25th, two Wednesdays later, is the 45th anniversary of the release of John Carpenter's Halloween. Where I want to do the watch along for Halloween that we should have done a year ago, but we I didn't. Did it last year? I we, watched the movie. You did watch along with it, but we didn't have any equipment because I didn't know how to buy the great cords. I was down here in the basement talking about it. Where were you? <laughs> it wasn't here. Hmm. It wasn't well, me. All right, Shaggy. What are you doing out of sight of Universal Studios? That's about it. That's a, a very packed month. I don't know what we'll do the other months. But probably next week we should should be the Cabin in the Woods episode. Maybe. We gotta watch or we gotta watch Fresh with Martha at some point. At some point. We got lots of ideas for good things. Well, I watch Gremlins too very badly. Just when is it gonna happen? I don't know. But we have lots of things we have to get to. But because of the anniversaries hitting when they do, right on a Wednesday, it seems it seems like the right time to finally do the Texas Chainsaw Massacre debate. All right. And then do the Halloween watch along. I am in. All I right. will prove to you it's not that great. Huh? That'll be you can be your position. All right, I'm going to find a position. I might pay attention to this movie. Uh Uh-oh. Watch out, everybody. Turns out I like it. (laughs) That's the end of the podcast. Nothing to talk about. That would be be funny. I don't expect that. Uh, That was pretty good. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Like a present. Well, we're going to end on that one because it's a good one. We'll see you probably for Cabin in the Woods next week. Question mark. See you later.